Uh, I actually recommend this book for everyone. You should read it. It's available in the library. It's, uh, it's also, I think, in the bookstore. It's in the bookstore. It's definitely something uh, all Florida Tech students uh, and faculty staff should probably read and take a look at. One of the pleasures of doing this book was I spent a lot of time with Jerry Cooper. And Cooper was an improbable founder of a, a university. He, he was a physicist. He was in the OSS, which was the ancestor of the CIA. He was dropped into Burma and hiked into China during World War II. And he had a myriad array of hobbies, uh, from exotic palm trees to reconstructing MGs. And he had seven MGs that he had literally taken from rusted heaps and made into magnificent automobiles uh, that uh, he had at his house. And for my, since you mentioned so kindly, my uh, 35 years of marital bliss. For my 25th wedding anniversary, he said to me, Gordon, would you like to borrow a car? Take your wife for a ride? I said, sure. <laughs> and so he gave me this 1952 MG. And Joy was, my wife's name is Joy, was taking, working on a second master's degree here. And so I met her. She came out of the quad, and I was sitting in that 52 MG, and uh, honked the horn and uh, said, let's go for a ride. Of course, the water plump blew uh, <laughs> right then, but I have the distinction, I think, of having uh, uh, had the president's uh, uh, MG and the president come fix the water pump. Uh, and we went on our ride and it was a marvelous, marvelous evening. <laughs> and I, in Jerry Cooper's debt, both for the car and for starting this university that gave us the opportunity to be here this afternoon. Definitely, I do agree with you. Um, more on a side note, um, I heard you worked with John Wayne. Ah, John Wayne. I think you should say I worked for John Wayne and I was fired by John Wayne. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Uh, when I was a graduate student at UCLA, my roommate got a job vetting the script for a, 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 a program that Wayne was doing where he was going to invite all of his friends, Jack Benny and... Uh, Bob Hope and Anne Margaret and Glenn Camel and just a series of people to do this portrait of America. And my roommate would go through and they'd say, give us the name of an American general in the revolution. He wrote, Horatio Gates. Okay, write that in. He was getting paid $500 a week for this. And I said, his name is Chuck Sloss. I said, Chuck, could you find a job for me? Came back and said, yes. Mr. Wayne has said they need a tutor for the children, or the illegitimate children in some instances, of the stars. And so I went out to the Culver City studio and I would be given these group of kids and I would sit there and try to, try to teach them some stuff. And what happened was one day during lunch, I was standing by they had these trailer, big trailers in, inside a, a, a sound set. And I was standing and Mr. Wayne came out and he said, uh, boy, where's the, where's the water? And I said, there's a spigot right over there. And I guess he thought my tone was insubordinate. Uh, but I was let go. But fortunately, the producer of the film uh, had another job available for me. Uh, and I went to work for a short time for an uh, absolutely bogus show called Hee Haw. Uh, and it was a country western show. And it was said in the Ozarks, and none of these people uh, were uh, uh, at all uh, authentic hillbillies. And I left that uh, uh, after uh, a few weeks. There's a sidebar to the story about John Wayne. When I worked for the Indians, one time I, used, I would go to Gallup, New Mexico on weekends. And I wanted at that time, perhaps I would be a writer, a novelist. And I would, I would go and I would talk to old Indians, and they would tell me stories about werewolves and skinwalkers. Well, one time I great Navajo named Frank Nez said, why don't you come with my family and we're going to go to the movies. And we went to this movie and it was called The Horse Soldiers. It's a John Wayne movie. You have not been to an American Western unless you have sat in a theater and be the only Anglo in the room. <laughs> and you see these things, oh, why did they knock the teepees over? Why did they do this? Well, at one point, John Wayne comes riding up on a horse and there's this ancient Indian standing there and John Wayne said something, you know, profound like, which way did they go? And the Indian said, 
Shiki Yate Hara. <laughs> and the audience just started laughing. And then the Indian was mumbling on something. And Frank explained to me that when the Hollywood film directors come, they say, talk Indian. Well, they would then begin a kind of meta commentary on the film. And in this instance, they were saying, big guy shacked up with waitress in Farmington, can't even get up on horse by himself, wears a girdle. <laughs> so when Mr. Wayne fired me, uh, uh, I thought, should I tell him that in the film uh, that was out there with Tab Hunter, that they were describing him as a man who needed a corset uh, and perhaps had some extramural uh, arrangements with a waitress. Right. Uh, but I decided not to uh, and moved on uh, and back to my academic career. So there was a song written about you. Um, Yes, there was a song. It's called Dr. Patterson's Great Bargain. Two folk singers, Florida folk singers, Frank and Ann Thomas, wrote it. I uh, attempted to buy a canoe one day, and I was chased by a three-legged Doberman pincer. And uh, the name of the dog was Tripod, we later found out. And uh, uh, it's a kind of... Uh, it's not Homeric, uh, but it is an odyssey. Uh, being chased through uh, the streets of Melbourne by a three-legged dog. And uh, the song was written and it was performed at the Florida Folk Festival. And I don't think anybody else is going to write a song about me. So uh, it's Do you, Can you sing a few lines? <laughs> <laughs> or just the lyrics? I, 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 frankly, it's a story. A word to, you know, it happened one Saturday morning. I was taking my boy for a ride when I saw a red canoe. And I thought I'd do myself some bargain. And it goes on, and, right. and uh, there's a bane <laughs> of a wolf in the distance. And my son says, "That's the oddest looking dog, uh, oddest looking horse I've ever seen." And it turns out to be a three-legged Doberman. That's, <laughs> that's roughly the song. Oh. Well, this leads us into our uh, rapid-fire uh, segment of the show, is where I'm going to ask you questions very rapidly. And you have to answer them as quickly as you can, whatever comes first to your mind. And then I basically decide if you did a great job or not at the end of it. And if I feel you did a great job with the rapid fire, you will get a Coffee with Kevin uh, coffee mug. Okay. So, uh, are you ready? You remember in the Geneva Convention, you're only supposed to give your name, rank, and uh, uh, identity number. So I've got those three things ready for you. <laughs> well, this is more than that. I, okay. I, I'm not going to touch those parts, but right. yeah, if you want to state that, that's fine. <laughs> so you're all set? 